Beneath the waves of our planet's oceans lies a huge, virtually unexplored world that researchers freely admit could contain almost anything. Over the past few years, there have been countless incredible discoveries that have revealed long-lost mysteries and secrets. Today, we'll be taking a look at the top 15 most amazing underwater discoveries. Number 15. Apollo 11 Engines the space race, which culminated in the 1960s, led to the development of some of the most advanced and powerful machines ever created, with the pinnacle being the Saturn V rockets that were responsible for launching the Apollo program into space and taking the first people to the moon. The huge F-1 engines that powered these rockets were jettisoned when they ran out of fuel, and it was part of the planned flight path to ensure that instead of falling back to the ground in populated areas, they would instead be consigned to a watery grave in the depths of the oceans. They landed in such a remote place that not even NASA kept a record of where they were. But in 2012, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon and Blue Origin, announced his intention to search for and retrieve the original engines used for Apollo 11's flight. Within just a year, he announced an incredible discovery at a depth of around 14,000 feet off the coast of Florida, and that he had found what he described as an incredible sculpture garden of twisted F-1 engines. The team has since managed to recover enough parts to fully reconstruct two of the engines, but the seawater has unfortunately worn away the serial numbers, so it's impossible to know for certain whether these were the actual ones used for Apollo 11. Number 14. Cenote Angelita The landscape of Mexico is littered with holes and entrances into vast underground cave networks that were once spiritually significant to ancient civilizations that lived there, and are now known as cenotes. There are many hundred that are popular destinations for explorers and hobbyist divers alike, but arguably the most unusual and interesting one is just outside the ruins of the Mayan city of Tulum, the Cenote Angelita. From hiking through dense, thick forest, you suddenly come across a huge, wide opening and find yourself staring at a stunning pool of water. Formed by the way limestone crumbles as water flows across it, this one is more than 200 feet deep. And if you're brave enough to venture towards the bottom, there's an extra surprise in store. That's because this cenote hides what appears to be at first an underwater river that flows independently from the rest of the water. It's an incredible thing to see, but all is not as it seems. Instead, this is formed because the water within the cave has varying levels of salinity, and therefore density, and it's the heavier water that's fallen to the bottom and caused this misty, mysterious river formation. It's true that it has distinctively different characteristics to the surrounding water and that there's a risk in actually swimming into it, which means that only experienced divers are allowed to get anywhere close, but it's one of the most rewarding dives that's possible anywhere on Earth. Number 13. Thonis, Heracleion There are a number of ancient texts that spoke of the ancient Egyptian empire, written in both Egypt and much further afield, that mention the city of Thonis, or Heracleion in Greek, which was a place that became one of the most powerful ports in the world at the time. Researchers believe that the city was nothing more than a myth because there was no sign of its actual location along the coastline of Egypt, but this all changed in the 20th century. As the story goes, an RAF pilot was flying over the Abu Kir Bay in 1933 when he noticed some strange shapes beneath the water, and he reported his observations once he had landed. It wouldn't be until 1999, though, that a full investigative team traveled to the site, and they couldn't believe what they found. With statues, endless artifacts, evidence of huge buildings, and significant wealth, this was clearly the lost city of Thonis, and they also found evidence of what had happened to it. It's now believed to have been a highly affluent port for 200 years between the 6th and 4th century BC, and was built across a series of islands in the Nile Delta that were connected by canals, in a similar way to how Venice was built. It was the combination of earthquakes, tsunamis, and rising sea levels that ended the city's prosperity, though, and it is believed that the ground would have liquefied following a flood in the late 2nd century BC, which caused the city to sink into the water and be forgotten about for millennia. Number 12. Zemchunk Canyon If you think of the largest cracks in the Earth's surface, it's likely that the Grand Canyon would come to mind. And while it's true this is by far the largest structure of its type on dry land, oceanographers have found one that's significantly larger, but is submerged in the water in the middle of the Bering Sea. Known as the Zemchunk Canyon, it drops from the shallow shelf of the sea more than 8,500 feet which means it's approximately 2,500 feet deeper than the Grand Canyon. 
At one end, the canyon branches off into two directions and is so vast that it has a drainage volume of 1,390 cubic miles. It's easily wide and deep enough to pilot a submarine through, and this has been done several times by researchers. But there's also the suggestion that militaries could use it to hide subs of their own and use the canyon walls to make them more difficult to detect. Beyond the vast amount of water that passes through, the canyon is also an important wildlife habitat. On the surface, large numbers of endangered short-tailed albatross gather to hunt fish, and within the water there are huge colonies of northern fur seals, dolphins, and numerous species of whales who take advantage of the fish, crabs, and sponges that live on the corals in the canyon. Number 11. The Vasa Built between 1626 and 1628, the Vasa was to become the new flagship of the Swedish Navy, but tragedy struck on her maiden voyage. On August 10, 1628, she sank after traveling just 0.8 miles, something that happened as a result of a poor design that meant she was top-heavy. A few years later, the large, valuable bronze cannons were retrieved, and the ship was then completely forgotten about. She was, though, rediscovered in the 1950s within a busy shipping route of Stockholm Harbor. Archaeologists explored this site and found the Vasa to be in surprisingly good condition, with a virtually intact hull. They were able to float the vessel to the surface and, after a period of restoration, is now on permanent display at the Vasa Museum in Stockholm. At 226 feet long, 38 feet wide, and 16 feet tall, it would have been an incredible vessel to see sailing especially when it was carrying 64 guns, 145 sailors, and 300 soldiers. Since the Vasa's rescue from the depths, the ship has become somewhat of a national symbol of Sweden, and now in a normal year receives as many as 35 million visitors wanting to see it for themselves. Number 10. Toxic Waste We are now more aware than ever about how our actions affect the natural world. And that's why there are strict rules regarding the types of materials and chemicals that can be released into the oceans. This hasn't always been the case, though, and a team of researchers recently revealed the horrifying extent of pollution around 12 miles off the coast of Los Angeles. Between 1947 and 1961, the site was regularly used to dispose of barrels of toxic waste from various industries and had been all but forgotten about over the following 50 years. Interested to find out how much still remains, autonomous underwater vehicles were sent to survey the seabed at a depth of around 3,000 feet, and across 36,000 acres they discovered at least 27,000 barrels. It's likely that there are far, far more, but that they've since been covered in sediment or simply eroded away, and the clear worry is just how much of this is affecting the environment. The waste they contained is almost inevitably being leaked into the water, being absorbed by sea life, and probably even making its way into the human food chain. The problem, though, is that there's nothing much that can really be done about it. They've now been there for so long that any attempt to move them would likely stir up the toxins and cause an even more significant safety risk, meaning the only option is to monitor the effects and ensure nothing like this can ever happen again. Number 9. The Silver Rift our planet's surface, instead of being one solid lump, is made up of a series of tectonic plates that are continuously pushing or pulling against each other. It's along these boundaries that earthquakes and volcanoes are most likely to develop, but the actual boundaries are normally so deep beneath the surface level of the ground that we never actually see them, except for when a powerful earthquake tears huge cavities into the landscape. There is one place where this is different, however, a lake in Pingvellir National Park of Iceland. It's one of the places where the North American and Eurasian plates diverge, and they pull away from each other by around three quarters of an inch or two centimeters a year. The crystal clear waters of the lake means it's possible to dive there and actually swim between the farthest edges of these plates, essentially meaning you're passing through the gap between the continents. There are three dive sites where you can do this, with the largest and best being called Cathedral, which is a 330-foot-long fissure with almost perfect visibility. It's places like this where you are truly able to appreciate the scale and power of our planet in action, and it truly is an awe-inspiring place to visit. Number 8. The Antikythera Mechanism It's easy to believe that we, as a civilization, are as technologically advanced as we ever have been, but occasionally, artifacts are discovered that prove our ancestors knew far more than we often give them credit for. 
This is exactly what happened with the discovery that was made in 1902 during an archaeological exploration of a shipwreck that had been found off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera. Believed to have been made around 200 BC, the bronze device was made up of as many as 37 different gears, which would combine to chart the movement of the moon and its irregular orbit, the passage of time, and even to track the four-year cycle of the ancient Olympic Games. Despite being hand-operated and needing to be aligned with the stars, the mathematics behind the mechanism is very advanced, and something that very few people even today would be able to replicate. This is seen by many as being evidence of the first ever analog computer, and it was built many centuries before anything similar was created elsewhere. If this was possible, it makes you wonder what other technologies the ancient Greeks had access to that have been lost to history and may one day be rediscovered. Number 7. The Baltic Sea Anomaly Research teams around the globe have been trying to step up their efforts to explore the seabed, but because it's so deep in some places, it's impossible for this to be done visually, and instead they need to rely on scanning techniques to chart regions. In 2011, a Swedish exploration group that specializes in discovering and retrieving shipwrecks had been charting a region in the Baltic Sea between Sweden and Finland and found something completely unexpected. Described by them as a 200-foot-wide circular object with features such as ramps, stairways, and a number of other features that aren't produced by nature, they attempted to capture further imagery but were prevented from doing so by strange electronic interference. The shape implied by the scans looked nothing like any watercraft known to have been built in the region throughout history, and the interference soon led to some people suggesting this could be a craft of extraterrestrial origin. Further studies, though, found a more earthbound explanation for the strange shape that was picked up by the team. The region is covered with sandstone and other types of volcanic rock, and was so heavily eroded by glaciers during the Ice Age, which experts insist could quite possibly have carved shapes like this. Of course, there's still a debate as to whether the Baltic Sea anomaly was made on purpose or not. How about you? Do you think it could have been formed naturally? Number 6. Locomotives in 1985, a charter boat captain was charting the seafloor around five miles off the coast of Long Branch, New Jersey, when he started to receive some strange readings. He was dragging a magnetometer behind his vessel in search of metallic objects beneath the waves, but what he found was much larger and stranger than even he could have expected. He stopped the boat and tried to dive the 90 feet that the object had been located, but at first the water was too murky to make anything out. Later, he tried again, and this time he couldn't believe what he was approaching, as on the sea floor there were two small locomotive engines. Both sat side by side and upright. Of course, they raised more questions than they answered, because how could two trains have made it to this remote ocean graveyard? Whistles and bells were removed from the engines, and it soon transpired that they were extremely rare 15-ton Planet 222-class models that were made by the Seth Wilmarth Union Works in the mid-1800s. As far as how they got there, it's now thought that they were being transported by boat from the factory to the New York and Erie Railroad, where they were to be used, but in the choppy weather they fell off the deck of the ship. Number 5. Mammoth Tusk The waters off the coast of California are some of the most explored in the world, thanks to the presence there of several organizations that use it as a testbed for oceanic research. In late 2019, however, a team from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute made a particularly strange sighting, and it would only be in March of 2021 that they were able to return to investigate it fully. While operating a remote submersible, they spotted what looked like an elephant's tusk in the silt. But how would that have made its way to the location that was not only 185 miles from the shore, but also around 10,000 feet deep? The full object was finally recovered in 2021, and it turned out to be even more incredible than they had originally thought. Measuring just over 3 feet or 1 meter long, it wasn't an elephant's tusk at all, but one from a mammoth. The extremely cold and high-pressure conditions it was in meant that it was remarkably well-preserved, despite being more than 100,000 years old. It's hoped that with further study, it'll be possible to learn how old the animal was, what its diet was, and possibly even how it died, which is surely the last type of investigation a team of marine biologists would have expected to be involved with. Number 4. Loki's Castle 
In the mid-Atlantic ridge of the Atlantic Ocean, at a location that lies between Greenland and Norway, are the most northerly known black smokers at a site that has since been named Loki's Castle. Smokers, which are hydrothermal vents, have of course been found around the world, but surprisingly they were first only detected as recently as 1979. What makes the ones at Loki's Castle particularly interesting, however, is that they happen in a region that's considered to be relatively stable. It's not on the boundary between tectonic plates, there's very little geological activity there, and as a result, there are hardly any vents either. These black smokers are at a depth of around 7,700 feet and have five active chimneys. The hottest releases water that's up to 570 degrees Fahrenheit, or 300 degrees Celsius in temperature, and they're sat on top of a mound of sulfide deposits that were measured to be 825 feet in diameter at the base, which is right now the largest deposit like this to have ever been found. Number 3. Manganese Nodules from what researchers have been able to determine, the vast majority of the ocean floors around the world are barren landscapes, almost similar to deserts on land. But that doesn't mean that they're covered with rippled and smooth, silty surfaces. Across the deepest depths and even in the shallows, as well as in lakes and in oceans, there's a peculiar phenomenon that could actually become a new frontier of mining across the globe. Known as manganese nodules, they're rounded balls of mineral concentrations, normally made up of iron and manganese hydroxides around a core, and they can be tiny particles or as large as a soccer ball. What's perhaps most surprising is just how common they are, and in some places they cover as much as 70% of the seabed. It was estimated by an academic that there's as much as 500 billion tons worth of manganese nodules across the globe, which would be incredibly valuable if they could be retrieved. There are a number of companies exploring ways to harvest these nodules with the development of cost-effective processes, and if they're successful, this could become a vital source of rare metals. Number 2. Yonaguni Monument In 1986, a group of friends from a local tourism office were diving in the waters off the coast of Yonaguni Island in Japan in order to check on local populations of hammerhead sharks and work out the best place to take visitors. Instead of noticing the sharks, though, they instead discovered some formations in the seabed that looked like architectural structures. When they reported what they had found, the site became known as the Yonaguni Monument. What seemed to be like huge stone formations, almost similar to the pyramids or Stonehenge, people soon began suspecting this could be another significant ancient monolith from a civilization that no one was aware had even lived there. What was more surprising was that there was no sign that the water levels have risen hugely there, meaning that these were either built tens of thousands of years ago, that the people responsible for them had developed a way to hold vast amounts of water back, or that the structures have since fallen into the water from a coastal position. The alternate view, though, is that they're simply the product of natural erosion, whereby ocean forces have caused the sandstone bedrock to develop well-defined edges and structures that just so happen to look like they've been man-made. Number 1. Atlit Yam The Carmel Coast, which is along the shoreline of Israel against the Mediterranean, has long been a place where evidence of ancient civilizations have been found. But in 1984, marine archaeologists discovered what's been described as being the most important underwater historical site ever. What he found were the ruins of Atlit Yam, a Neolithic village that was home to a farming community between 8900 and 8300 years ago. Across an area of around 10 acres, researchers have since uncovered a huge well, dry stone walls, a stone semicircle made up of several 1,300-pound monoliths, burial sites, tools, and countless other artifacts and objects. It's the earliest evidence of an organized community in the region, and they've also found homes, storage yards, and even large piles of fish that were ready for trade, which suggests that the residents fled in a hurry. The coastline there is believed to have been above water thousands of years ago, and all the evidence points towards a massive tsunami that caused devastation and resulted in a huge area falling into the sea. Furthermore, this seems to have happened at a similar time to when it's known an eruption of nearby Mount Etna led to the entire eastern flank of the mountain falling into the sea, and likely generating waves up to 130 feet high, meaning this could well be the earliest evidence ever discovered of a community having to evacuate their homes in the face of a natural disaster. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.